This is uh, spectroscopy for International Baccalaureate Chemistry. Um, what's it all about? Well, what it's all about is getting pieces of a jigsaw and making a beautiful picture with those pieces of the jigsaw. I hope you've done some mass spec, some infrared and some NMR, NMR before you've done this and you certainly have a working knowledge of organic chemistry before you attempt any of the problems uh, which are contained in here. Um, how did I get better at this? Um, I wasn't born knowing how to do these things. I did this, 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 and this, and this. You get the idea. Without practice, you get better at nothing. No one is born knowing how to play the violin. They learn. This is what you're doing right now. So welcome to the show. Okay, some basics to begin with. You, they could start the problem from two different points. One is using the index of hydrogen deficiency, the IHD or IH2D, which I'll come to in a minute. And the other way is using empirical formulae. So I've given a little problem here. This should just be revision for you. You've done this during quantitative chemistry or stoichiometry, whatever you want to call it. Um, a formula that gives the simplest ratio of atoms is an empirical formula. Uh, this question asks me to determine the empirical and the molecular formula. It gives me the percentage compositions here and a molecular mass of 520.8. It gives me the answers, but how did I get there? Well, I like to set these out. If you've seen my previous videos on this, you'll know how I like to set these out, I hope. And we've got, my, got some magnesium, got some silicon, got some hydrogen and a bit of oxygen. Uh, we've got 28.03 grams of oxygen and 24.30. My source for my atomic masses is the uh, IB data booklet. Silicon, we've got 21.6%, don't forget percent, just change it to grams. And atomic mass 2DP, to match the DP in the question, 28.09. Hydrogen, we've got 1.16%, now it's 1.16 grams, 1.16 over 1.01. And finally, we have oxygen, which is 49.21% divided by 16.00 from the uh, IB data booklet. Do the sums. This is 1.15, this is 0 0.77, this is 1.15, and this is 3.08. How do we find out the ratio? We divide them all by the smallest number, which is 0 0.77. So clearly this one's going to be one uh, over 0 0.77 over 0 0.77. This equals 1.5. This is 1. Uh, this is 1.5 for the hydrogen, and it is 4 for the oxygen. These already have uh, decimal places, so we have to times this all by 2 to get rid of the decimal places. You can't have 1.5 atoms of magnesium. So 1.5 times 2 is Mg3. Silicon times 2 silicon 2, hydrogen 1.5 times 2 is 3, and oxygen 4 times 2 o is 8, Mg3 Si2 H3 O8. That is the empirical formula. The molecular formula must be, well, the MR of Mg3 Si2 H3 O8. I've not done it, but I'm pretty certain that this is correct. Is 260.4 because there are two lots of that to make 520.8, which is the molecular or molar mass of uh, this chrysotile. Jolly good. Easy, right? Okay, let's crack on. So the index of hydrogen deficiency, it used to be known as the degree of unsaturation. It basically means how much more room there is for more hydrogen. It might be better, as it says here, to be shortened to I. H2D rather than IHD because it's the number because the IHD is equal to the number of units of H2 that need to be added to make it saturated. Okay, it's so all singly bonded. Uh, to work out the, in the IHD, uh, all that needs to be known is the molecular formula. So here is the uh, formula which you need to remember. Double the amount of carbon, add two. Add any one nitrogen, take away any hydrogen, 
This is unusual. It could happen. They could put nitrogen in there. It's unusual. I've not known them do that a great deal. And then take away one for each halogen. Divide the lot by two. Okay, so this is often the first step in a uh, determine the structure type of problem. So the simple and fast calculation is the useful first step when confronted with structure determination. Okay, so we're going to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency for each of the following and see whether it corresponds to the structure. Um, let's hope it does. So things to work out, if I get an IHD of one or two or three or more, what does it, what does it mean? Well, one index of hydrogen deficiency means one double bond or one ring. Okay, uh, a triple bond, by the way, a triple bond, that would have an I, uh, IHD of two, because there's one for the first double bond, and there's one for the second uh, bond, triple bond, uh, three. Okay. Um, other things to remember is that uh, oxygen, or neither oxygen nor sulfur, do not affect, is it affect? I teach chemistry, not English. It does not change the, the IHD. Okay, so let's have a go at uh, one of these problems. Let's look at A. So what's the IHD of this compound? Well, it's two times the amount of carbon. Carbon there are one, two, three, four, five. Two times five, put that in brackets, plus two, uh, plus any nitrogen. No, there's no nitrogen. Minus any hydrogen. Okay, how many hydrogen? got two, four, five, six. So take away six for the hydrogen. Divide, divide the lot by two. Two fives are ten. A two is twelve. Take away six is six. Divided by two equals three. Add a three. Uh, indices of hydrogen deficiency. Yes, there are. There's a double bond. There's a ring. And there's a double bond here. So that tells me that the IHD of three matches the compound. In the second one, what we're going to do, we're going to do two times the amount of carbon. Let's go back to our blue. So two times one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's two times six. Don't forget to add two. And that's take away two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. So take away ten hydrogens. There's only carbon and hydrogen in this compound. Divide by two, that's four over two which equals two. The structure is what? Well, it's CH3, it's that one, to CH to CH to CH2 to CH to CH2. So there must be a double bond there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and that's gonna be one, two, there, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Bingo, two double bonds, IHD of two. <clears throat> In C, we've got two rings here. It's a bit unusual for the IB, but let's roll with it. So twice the amount of carbon. There we go. Two times the carbon. The number of carbons is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's two times twelve. Don't forget to add two. And that's going to be take away the hydrogens. Hydrogens to a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Careful on your counting. Take away seventeen hydrogens plus one for my nitrogen. Divide that by two. I make that ten over two, which equals five. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five for the rings. This little beastie here, we've got a chlorinated uh, ester. Uh, H3C, so we're going to have one, two, three carbons. So that's three uh, times uh, 
two, double it, add two, six, two is eight, take away three, four, five, take away one for the oxygen that's in the chain, divide it by two, three, two is a six, add two is eight, minus six is uh, four, over two, eight minus six is gonna be, uh, have to do six, eight, take away five is three, take away one is two, two divided by two is one. There we go, bingo. One double bond, indeed, jolly good. And then the last one, this is an ethyne with a ketone in the chain. So they're gonna be one, two, three, four, five. So it's two times five for the carbon, plus two. Take away three, four, five, six. Take away six over two. Two fives are 10, add two is 12. Take away six is six over two is three. And that's gonna be one, two, three. Index of hydrogen deficiency is three. Double the carbon, add two, take away the hydrogen, divide by two, and then factorize for any uh, oxygen or uh, nitrogen. And going by the rules. If you want to do some more of those, just flick ahead. The document is beneath this video and you will find a number of problems here that you can use to practice with. Okay, so that's IHD. We've looked at empirical formulae, index of hydrogen deficiency. Now let's have a look at mass spectroscopy. Um, it used to be in the old days that you used to have to know it was vaporization and ionization, acceleration, deflection, detection, recording, and I'd play Star Wars music and play and vaporization, ionization, acceleration, ah, deflection, detection, recording. They don't care about that anymore, unless you do the option. And we're not doing the option, we're doing the uh, topic 20. So things to remember, that the fragments you see coming out of the mass spectrometer, after it's been accelerated and deflected, correlate with a fairly limited amount of um, molecular masses, certainly for IB. Okay. Um, these are the main ones you would expect it to be able to work out. So obviously carbon's 12, three for the hydrogen, that's 15. So if you get a fragment at 15, probably a methyl group, CH3. If you get one at 17, it's difficult for carbon to get to 17, isn't it? Carbon's 12, so you'd have to have five hydrogens, which you all know could not exist. So if you get something at OH, oxygen 16 plus one is 17, that's a very strong indication there's an OH. So it could be an alcohol group or a carboxylic acid group. Um, I can't tell you which one it is, you'd have to do further testing, but it's a strong indication of the functional group that is present. Now we have a bit of uh, conflict, because at 29 it could be C2H5 or an ethyl group, or CHO, so it could be an aldehyde group from a terminal uh, carbon atom in a chain. 31, as you can see, is CH3O, so that could be a fragment from uh, an ester or an ether. And then 45 is classic C double OH. These numbers here are not enough to tell you definitively that is carboxylic acid or that is ethyl or that is methyl. You have to bear it in mind when you're doing it and that was the whole point of the first slide. You're trying to get pieces of the jigsaw puzzle so you can build a beautiful picture. Let's have a look at a mass spectrum. So here we have a nice simple molecule. This is pentane. Um, pentane is uh, alkane, it's pent, so it's five, so it's double add two, so it's C5H12. Five twelves are 60, add 12 ones is 72. And this is here, this is the molecular ion. All that's happened is we've gone from C5H12 to C5H12 dot. Okay, so we, we've added one electron or we can take one electron away and make the positively charged molecular ion C5H12 plus, often referred to as just M plus. So this thing here tells me the molecular weight. So even if I didn't have this, I'd have an idea about roughly the size of it. If carbon is 12, 
It can double or single or triple bond. It could form uh, ring systems. Um, we know how carbon behaves, so this is vital information to give you certain clues on your path to discovering. Okay, so we've got the molecular mass, 72. Let's call it 72 grams per mole. 72 to 57, what's the difference between 72 and 57? It's 15. And 15 is what? You remembered, right? 15 is a CH3 group. So as this has gone down the chain, it's broken apart, and that CH3 group has come off, and now we've got the meth, eth, pro, they've got the butyl fragment which is left. Okay, the next peak is 43. 43 is a classic number. Three carbons, 312, so 36. At seven is 43, so that is a meth, eth, that's the propyl group, so it's broken here, so this is this part of the chain here. And then finally, we have C2H5. This CH3CH2 is this fragment here. Now, students sometimes get hung up about, what's these little lines here? Don't worry about the little lines. Why are the little lines there? Well, carbon exists as isotopes, as does hydrogen, uh, protium, deuterium, and tritium. And the existence of isotopes will give the relative abundances at different ones. It'll be in different mixtures. So if you've got C2H5, one of these carbons could be C12, one could be C13, and one of these could be protium and one could be deuterium. Hence, you get clusters around each of the uh, responses in a mass spectrum. So from the spectra, you can figure out that the molecular mass is 72 grams per mole. So one use is looking for characteristic fragments. So if you looked on the previous page, you will have got your uh, index of hydrogen defic deficiency. If it is an um, organic molecule, you may well have got uh, some information from an empirical formula calculation. And now you've laid the foundation for beginning to look at the different spectra to come up with, with a structure. So these are the classic fragments you should know. 15, 17, 29, 31, and 45. Um, even I don't think you really need to remember those. In an exam, you've got the atomic masses. If you know it's a hydrocarbon, what multiples of 12 and 3 make sense as an alkane, alkene, or a ring system, and then apply it to your mass spectrum that you've got. So I know now that I've got um, ethyl, methyl, propyl, and butyl fragments, and um, I could perhaps tie this with an empirical formula or an IHD, and elucidate the structure as that of pentane. The other use for mass spec is if you have two possible structures, you can work out which one is the most likely. Okay, so we've got two samples of pentanone. So pent, one, two, three, four, five. Two different samples, one, two, three, four, five. So there are two different isomers. We could have the carbonyl group on two. Don't forget two is here and two is here. Or we can have the carbonyl group on three. It can't be here, it would be two. And if it was on the end, what would it be? It would be mutually eats pink biscuits pent, pentanal, not pentanone. So it's penton 2 own, or it's pentan 3 own. We'll stick the hydrogen in just for completion. So each of these bonds has a carbon attached to it. Jolly good. So if the spectra gave peaks at 29, remember what 29 was? 29 was a ethyl group. 57 and 86. 86, what's 86? 86 is going to be the molecular mass of this whole beastie, isn't it? So that's M plus. Okay, 57, what's 57 going to be? Let's have a look. If the carbonyl was on the second atom, so if it was this one, we'd expect to get fragments here by this one chopping off so ch3co two carbons are 24 25 26 27 and 16 for the oxygen that's 43 we get a 43 and we'd also get a fragment here one two three three twelves are 36 add seven is 43 so we'd expect to get two uh, fragments from this molecule as well as the uh, 71 where this methyl has just fallen off. So it's CH3, CH2, CH2, CO. So it could break here as well, giving us 71. If it was on the third one, well, 
you get CH3, CH2, CHO, CH3, CH2, CHO, because this is going to break here or here. And it's going to give one peak, isn't it? It's going to give one peak if it's this lot or this lot. It's going to give the same peak. So since the peak at 57 matches the peak expected at Penton 3 ohm, this carbonyl must be on the third carbon. So if it's got two, it's that one. If it's got one, it's that one. So that's knowing the structure, you can determine which one is the most likely. But is that still enough to answer? Well, no, it's not. Mass spec is a great lead-in and a great basis. But then you have to start looking at the infrared spectrum. Infrared spectrum have characteristic bending and stretching, and I'm not going to go into this, the uh, asymmetric and symmetric stretching and all that stuff. That's a completely different lecture and not the purpose of my videos. What is the purpose is to remind you that a big peak around about 3200 is an alcohol. If it has a dog leg here, it's a carboxylic acid. The C double bond sharp stretch here is characteristic of C double bond O, which could be an aldehyde, could be a ketone, could be a carboxylic acid, if you've got the 3200 as well. Uh, could be an ester, am I missing anything? Could be an amide. So just because you have C double bond O, all that tells you is you have C double bond O. This stuff here, that's, that's hard to assign. And of course, all this stuff here is the fingerprint region. And this is the ID or identification region. Okay. So an unknown molecule with a molecular formula C6H12O. Which of these molecules best corresponds to the IR spectrum? Now an infrared spectrum tells you what's there, but even more powerfully, it tells you what isn't there. So have a look at this spectrum. What is not there? If there was an alcohol, there'd be a big, broad peak here, wouldn't there? But there's not. So it can't be that one, and it can't be that one. So IR is powerful for what it can discount, as much for what it can include. Okay, what else do we see? Oh, look, big, sharp absorption at 1750 so there is a carbonyl group so that doesn't have a carbonyl group so the only two possible molecules it could be is c or d just from the ir spectrum powerful stuff what else do we know it's told me that i have a molecular formula of c6 h12o and this thing has two o's in it so it can't be that one i've just answered the question the answer is D. That's all it can be. There's little bits here, it's probably a bit of alcohol, or CH, sorry, here, a bit of CH stretching. Uh, this is the giveaway carbonyl, and you are home and dry. So the IB kind of limits it to a few areas, okay. Uh, the explanation, if you couldn't understand my broad northern English accent about how to assign those peaks, is given there. Please look at that at your leisure. Okay, the final piece of the jigsaw is NMR, nuclear, mag nuclear re magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Okay, we use TMS, tetramethyl silane, which is this stuff. Why? Because it gives one peak, which we assign to zero. It's arbitrary. It gives a nice clean one peak at zero. It doesn't interfere with samples. It's uh, not... Uh, high toxicity it's uh, it's a useful compound and is internationally recognized as the one that we used now let's have a look we've got this hydrogen here it's yellow and that's yellow but why has it got one two thrice that's a quartet well it's a quartet because hydrogens are split it's called split by their next nearest neighbors hydrogens or protons this one has one two three we apply the n plus 1 rule, 3 plus 1, 1, 2, 3 plus 1 is 4. That's why that's 4 and why that is a quartet. Okay, so one hydrogen gives four signals because it's split by the adjacent carbon's protons. It's also downfield. This is called downfield and this is upfield. This is downfield. This is more electronegative. 
So electronegative atoms like chlorine will shift this proton downfield to the bottom left-hand corner of the spectrum. The next one we have is these three hydrogens, but they're at 2.06. They're not shifted as downfield because they're further away from this electronegative chlorine. They are split by their nearest neighbor. Now there's only one proton, so n plus one is two. One proton plus one is two. Hence we get a doublet. So this is the spectrum you'd expect to get from chlorodichloroethane. 1,1 one, one dichloroethane to give it its proper name. Okay, we'll come to integration shortly. Here we have ethanol. Another rule that we can apply here, which is why I've included this one. If the hydrogen or the proton is stuck to an oxygen, the oxygen shields it and there is no splitting. So this hydrogen cannot see these protons here. So this big singlet here, this hydrogen, is that hydrogen there, it is not split. And then we see, this is another reason I've included these, the characteristic, these two hydrogens here next to the oxygen, so it's downfield, same as the first one, it's downfield because it's next to the electronegative atom. These two hydrogens can see these three hydrogens, N plus one is four, so we get a quartet. And then this one, these hydrogens here, these are further away, further away from the oxygen, so they're up, uh, downfield, uh, sorry, upfield, let's get it right, they're upfield, and it's split by these two, so two plus one is three, so we get a triplet. Very powerful evidence for structure determination when combined with mass spec and IR. We now have uh, an ester. So we have ethyl acetate. Look at the spectrum. Why is each one each? Well, this hydrogen here, are these green hydrogens there. Why? Because there's a carbonyl group, so there's no splitting. So you get a singlet. I know you can see that little bit there. That's probably due to isotopic abundance. This hydrogen's here. We've got one, two, three. We've got a triplet because it's split by these two here, N plus one. And these two are split by that three, because it can't see past that oxygen, the oxygen shields, three plus one, so that's a quartet. So three, a triplet, and a quartet is classic CH2CH3 group. Now what the IB like to do, they like to give you spectra like this. And was it last year? I think it was May 2018. They asked you to take out your ruler and measure the height of these integrations here. Then look at the ratio of the heights from the top to the bottom. And you had to go to one decimal place on centimeters to get the correct answer. Uh, these are done for us, so let's have a look. It's the same as the previous one, but I wanted it to be familiar. So B, this one is not split. Why? Because the carbonyl is there. But there are three, and how high is this? Let's have a look in a second. No hydrogen, no hydrogen. CH2 split by CH3, so that's the quartet, so C is going to be here. And then A split by the two protons there is going to make a triplet, which is this one here. So the relative heights would give three hydrogens for A, two hydrogens for C, and three hydrogens for B. If you measure these integrations and uh, look at the divide by the smallest number, you get a ratio of 2 to 3 to 3, which is a direct number for the number of protons in, in this instance, ethyl ethanoate. So, I suggest you practice, 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 and do some more practice. Where can you find? Uh, if you look at these ones, the uni-level combined problems, and say 1 to 4, IB, 5 and 6 are definitely HL, seven and eight are, are kind of uni level uh, that's easy enough that's easy enough chem guide is just great just just look at it elsmere, elsmere college have wonderful resources i couldn't see any mark schemes but i'm sure you can work them out after working through this video uh, lawrence cock always recommended and then some work on ir for you there when you've done that then you can perhaps embark on the next section of this video which is having a look at some ib past paper questions